In this video we will see how to find the stable state voltages and current and quasi stable state voltages and current in a collector coupled monostable multivibrator. This is a collector coupled monostable multivibrator circuit. We know that in monostable multivibrator it consists of one stable state and one quasi stable state. When we give the DC supply BCC and minus VBB through resistors, the circuit will enter into stable state. Here, as per the circuit diagram given, stable state conditioners Q2 is on and Q1 is off. This is the stable state condition. And when we give trigger pulse, it will enter into quasi stable state and it will remain the circuit will remain in quasi stable state for a time period of t equal to 0.69 rc in quasi stable state q1 will be on q2 will be off and we will give the trigger to q2 transistor base a high amplitude negative pulse will be given as trigger to q2 transistor base when we give the trigger, Q2 transistor will enter into off state and Q1 transistor will enter into on state. This, can, this state is called as quasi stable state. After a particular time period, based on capacitor discharge through the base of Q2, after a time period of T, Q2 will enter into on state and Q1 will enter into off state. This is the next stable state. We will find the stable state voltages and current. Similarly, in quasi stable state, we will also find the quasi stable state voltages and current. First, we will consider the stable state. In stable state, Q2 transistor is on, Q1 transistor is off. We have to find VC1, VC2, VB1. VB2, IC1, IC2, IB1, IB2. Here, as per the circuit diagram, if Q1 transistor is off, its collector current and base current is equal to 0 ampere. And here, when Q2 transistor is on, its collector voltage will be equal to VCE sat and its base voltage will be equal to VBE sat since emitter is directly connected to ground. So VCE2 is equal to VCE sat, VB2 is equal to VBE sat. For a silicon transistor, VCE sat is approximately equal to 0 0.2, VBE sat is approximately equal to 0 0.7. Then remaining four parameters we have to find. For VB1, we know what is VC2 and what is minus VBB. Therefore, by applying superposition principle, VB1 is equal to VC2 into R2 divided by R1 plus R2 plus minus VBB into R1 divided by R1 plus R2. This is by using superposition principle. Then here VC1 is given by VC1 is the collector voltage across Q1 transistor. Here the VC1 one end is connected to capacitor. In stable state capacitor will hold fixed amount of voltage. And here VC1 is approximately equal to VCC. And next we have to find what is IC2. IC2 is the collector current flowing through Q2 transistor. To find IC2, we have to know what is I1 and what is IC2 plus I1. IC2 plus I1 is given by IC2 plus I1 is equal to current flowing through RC resistor. Therefore, VCC minus VC2 divided by RC. And I1 is given by 
Vc2 minus Vb1 divided by R1. If we know I1, we will be able to find what is IC2. Next we have to find what is IB2. IB2 is the current which is flowing to the base of Q2 transistor. IB2 other end is connected to resistor R and through that it is connected to VCC. And whatever current flows through R will flow through Q2 transistor since Q1 is off. Therefore IB2 is the current which is flowing through resistor R. Therefore IB2 is approximately equal to VCC minus BB2 divided by R. This is the stable state voltage and current when Q2 was on and Q1 is off. Next similarly we have to find quasi stable state voltages and current. In quasi stable state Q2 is off and Q1 is on. In quasi stable state Q2 transistor is off, Q1 transistor is on by giving a negative pulse to base of Q2 transistor. And we have to find what is Vc1, Vc2, Vb1, Vb2, Ic1, Ic2, Ib1, Ib2. Since Q2 transistor is off, the collector current and its base current is equal to 0 ampere. And Q1 transistor is on. Q1 transistor, this is Q1 transistor. Since Q1 transistor is on, its VC1 is equal to VC saturation. And VB1 is equal to VBE saturation. Next we have to find what is VB2, VC2, IC1 and IB1. Here IB1 is equal to, if we know the current flowing through, I, if we know the current I2 and I3, we will be able to find IB1. I2 is given by, BCC, minus VB1, VCC minus VB1 divided by RC plus R1. Since Q2 transistor is off, no current will be flowing through Q2 transistor. So whatever current flowing through RC will be flowing through R1. And I3 is equal to VB1 minus minus VBB divided by R2. Therefore, IB1 is equal to I2 minus I3. And here, VC2 is approximately equal to, we know what is I2. If we know I2, VC2 is equal to VCC minus I2 into RC. And what is VB2? VB2 is equal to and here VB2 and the current IC1 we will be able to find only at the initial stage. When we give the trigger pulse, if we consider the waveform at VB2, when Q2 is on, its output voltage will be approximately equal to VBE sat. When Q2 is on, when we give a negative trigger pulse, the base voltage of Q2 will come to negative some negative voltage after that whatever the capacitor stored voltage that will get discharged through the base 2 when it discharges through the off transistor the voltage across the base will get increased exponentially so we will able to find only the initial voltage at T 
when we give the trigger pulse. The initial voltage at T when we give the trigger pulse. After T, the whatever the voltage dis discharged by the capacitor will get exponentially increased in the base of Q2. So what is the initial voltage? When Q2 is on, it is having a voltage Vb is set. And it will get reduced by a voltage of approximately whatever changes happen in Vc1 will get affected to B2. Here when Q2 is on, it is having Vb is at. When Q1 is off, Vc1 is approximately equal to Vcc. When Q1 enters into on state, this is approximately equal to Vc is at. Therefore, that change in voltage will get affected in base 2. Therefore, Vb is at minus Vcc minus Vc sat. This change will get affected in Vb2. This is the initial voltage in the quasi-stable state. After that, the voltage in the base will get exponentially increases. When it reach again Vb is at, a small peak overshoot will be there. After that, it will maintain Vb is at. This stage is Q2 is off. After that again Q2 will come to one step. Therefore Vb2 initially when we give the trigger its voltage is approximately equal to Vb sat minus Vcc minus Vc sat. So from this we have find what is Vc2, Vb2, Ib1. Next we have to find what is Ic1. Ic1 is equal to I4 plus I5. Since Q2 transistor is off, whatever current flowing through R will be flowing through Q1 transistor. I4 is given by Vcc minus Vc1 divided by Rc. I5 is equal to Vcc minus Vb2 divided by if we know I4 and I5, we will be able to find what is IC1. This, para, this voltages and currents are called as quasi-stable state voltages and current. Thank you.